Crossroads Media. Look, the Sixers went into Toronto. They lost the basketball game. The fourth quarter was bad. James Harden wasn't good. Matisse Thibault's unwilling to get vaccinated, which is hurting his teammates, and that is problematic if they were to match up with the Raptors in a playoff series. I hate to break the news to you, but I'm not out here screaming tonight. I, I'm I'm just I've I've stressed the same thought forever now. I don't care about these games. I just don't care about these games anymore. And I'm not telling you that there's nothing to be worried about. James Harden looks to be a little bit washed, okay? He cannot find ways to beat players out by the perimeter and get to the rack. With that said, though, he's getting teammates wide open looks. He's finishing with 15 assists. He's professionally running a half-court offense. He's playing the game at a pace that I think is successful. But he can't beat guys anymore. He's got centers on him, and he can't get by them. So I don't know what to do with that information for this back stretch and this back run. Matisse Thibel, I'm with Doc Rivers. I can't say that Matisse Thibel being there today means you win the game by any means. Now, you already know you don't have a lot of players on your bench, and we know the players that you do have, their bench has been miserable since the trade. So if you are losing bodies and losing a starter and plugging a bench guy like Danny into the starting rotation, and then you're forced to move someone who can't even get into a bad bench rotation into the bench rotation yeah it's going to hurt you just from a body standpoint even if I am not the biggest fan in the world in Matisse Thibel and knowing that you are terrible defensively whatever defense you have you have to maximize and there's not a big margin for error of course and that showed up today as well so really when we talk about these losses and how bad they look and how awful they are it stems from how did James Harden play and normally when he gives you an exciting game and a really solid game and a strong game, the team looks a lot better. And that was an issue where he's airballing threes as if he's Furkan Korkmaz. He's getting shelled out there and shooting three of 12 from the floor, and he can barely do anything that's serviceable when it comes to scoring the basketball. If that's what we are going to get, well then yeah, it's not going to go very well, obviously. We all discussed for weeks and weeks and weeks, which adds up to months, by the way, according to my calculations, you have a chance to compete if Joel Embiid and James Harden play well. Well, you brought in James Harden so Joel Embiid didn't have to carry you every single night. Right now, it doesn't seem like you're, he's holding his end of the bargain up. So, yeah, of course you're not going to look good. Of course you're not going to win a, a bunch of games when this is the outing that you get out of James Harden. Now, once again, that doesn't mean that giving up a guy who's a UFA and who's unwilling to play for you, you don't take the chance and you don't swing on this. Oh, now James Harden looks awful. You did terrible. No, stop it. You did not do terrible for making the deal just because it looks this way right now because then you're inferring that that means, that, that means James Harden staying in Brooklyn, Ben Simmons sitting on the bench doing nothing, Andre Drummond leaving at the end of the year, and Seth Curry, who's okay, is winning the championship. You're not winning the championship then either. It's a methodical, calculated risk that I would take every single day of the week, even if it ends up not working and it ends up not being successful. That means you're implying what you had was good enough. And it's funny, I was having a debate with one of my buddies about this who every single time they lose, he texts me. Whenever they do well, he doesn't text me, or he does and feels like this team could go on a great run. And I go, dude, you just react way too strongly and way too deeply game by game. And he brought up that James Harden sucks. He's the worst player ever. And I'm like, well, I mean, you're downplaying what pace is played like when he has the ball in his hands and the alternative to a point guard and a floor general without him here. It may not be good enough it might not be good enough but there's no way in hell that any other opportunity they could have moved forward with would have been better than swinging on what they did at the trade deadline and I stand by that regardless on how the Sixer season ends so right now I mean, look, you know, I'm a big Phillies guy, and I got opening day tomorrow, spring training's done, I'll be at Citizens Bank Park losing my damn mind. But ultimately, when we're discussing the Sixers and the playoff run, I've had a very clear thought for game 76 through 82. Get me finished!
finished. Get me finished. Does that even make sense? I want this to end. Let's get to the playoffs. I said the same thing every day. Every day I sit here with this damn microphone on my head. I want it to be done. Because I can't justify what games like 81 and games 82 and games 80 and games 79. I I can't justify using that as some huge, 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 huge takeaway. Now, with that said, that doesn't mean that this team's going to win a championship. Obviously, I've changed my expectations since figuring out what James Harden is all about, which is he doesn't have the same step. He doesn't have the same ability to drive and break down defenders. He just doesn't. With that said, though, there still are games where he does do well. He has these tough ones, and they keep popping their head in way more than we would like to. So at this point, I'm expecting it to happen more than we would like to. With that said, it doesn't mean that you never get anything good. So I don't know what this means, to be honest with you. I have no idea what this means as a whole and as a team, but... I do know that he can't shoot the basketball anymore. I do know that he's having problems, and I'm now relying on Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid as the tandem to try and close out fourth quarters, along with Danny Green, who's in the corner making shots that reminded me of Villanova versus UNC in the national championship game where he's double clutching, and his legs are basically in midair, and they look like, I don't know, he's riding a bicycle, but yet it still finds its way. Maybe that's your positive. Danny Green wakes the hell up and adds more space to this team. I know the Raptors didn't have their guys and Fred Van Vliet and OG, so Pascal and, and Gary end up exploding and scoring their points. There's a lot of issues tonight, though. Tobias Harris, who knocks down threes early, he pretty much evaporated. James Harden wasn't there. So this team needs everyone prepared and everybody mentally and physically available for them to have a chance. They're not deep enough for one guy to have an off night or two guys to have an off night, and then you're going to be successful and win a bunch of games. It's not a sustainable style of play. It's not something that you could rely on consistently. It may happen here and there, but if Matisse Thibault is not going to get vaccinated, you're boned in that area. You are. And I know what everyone's thinking. You get your cho- you get your choice to do it or not. Yeah, you do. But you also have to realize that you're a professional athlete and your actions, they speak loud. And it's all about a team. And you are now impacting your team. And it's not only your decision. I mean, it's your decision, but your decision impacts not just you, but it impacts everybody around you as well. It impacts the city of Philadelphia. It impacts your team. It impacts your squad, especially if you're going to match up with the Raptors in the first round where you can't play away games. So don't act as if I can't bash you and say it's a stupid decision and a selfish decision to not get it because there's a cause and effect. So you are entitled to make that decision. I'm entitled to rip you apart and say it's a selfish move because you are hurting everybody else involved. And sports, it's a it's a team situation. Now, in terms of this team coming out to an early lead and then losing it, I can't stand what I see on social media, honestly. The Sixers had a big lead in the first quarter. Did you expect the Raptors to shoot that poorly the rest of the way? No. They were going to eventually fall. They were eventually going to make shots. Now, I didn't love every part of the Sixers game, but I hate when the Sixers go up big or any NBA team goes up double digits in the first quarter and think that the second, third, and fourth quarter, the other team is just going to keep up that same exact pace where they couldn't buy a damn shot while the Sixers are making all these threes. It's going to even out. That's not the same as a big blown lead at the end of the third quarter. That's not the same as a fourth quarter double digit lead with eight minutes to go. When you lose a double digit lead after the first frame or so, that happens way more than you think it does in the NBA. Now, here's a positive if we're trying to scratch and crawl for some positives here in the outcome of the game. They are taking threes. I do feel that their three-point shooting over the last few games have been stronger, have been smoother, have been hunting threes, if you will, if you want to throw a little Brett Brown your way. 
And I think that that will relate to more success when we talk about winning some playoff games. And yes, they are going to win playoff games. I promise you that. I guarantee you that they will win playoff games games. We're getting sucked into that time right now because it's so close to playoffs that whatever you see as of late automatically means that that's the team you're getting every single night and there's no way you win if you lose games right now. And it's just not the case. You're reacting way too night to night and you're reacting way too quickly. There are things to note. James Harden is a major concern. You're not going to win if James Harden stinks. If James Harden stinks more than he is good and he's had his good games, he's had his bad games. If he's going to consistently give you bad games and not give you the good James Harden enough, then you have no shot. You have no shot in hell. Who are they going to match up against? Where are they going to land? They got two games to go this weekend, a back-to-back. How do they even manage that? Do they play their stars? Do they not? Is there a reason to have James Harden log in all these minutes when it's obvious that the hamstring's bothering him and we need as much rest as we possibly can for someone like James Harden right now? Where do you go? Do you look at the seating and try and work your way out of this and look at what Boston's going to do to maybe squeeze into the three? I like thinking about that matchup more than the Raptors. And Nick Nurse, he throws crazy looks your way. He gives you interesting thoughts. And he makes it hard. You're going to have to earn it big time. It's going to be a battle. It's not going to be a breeze for either team. The Raptors, everyone's like, oh, but the Raptors won in the regular season. I don't care. I've seen the Sixers win series in the regular season before, and then it maybe not go the same exact way that you would think in the playoffs. Or it didn't go a certain way in the regular season, and then it went a different way in the playoffs. We've seen that throughout all teams in the NBA regular season. It doesn't mean as much as you want it to mean. So that doesn't matter to me. This will be a dogfight. It will be an absolute tough, tough series. It's not impossible to win. And sure, I'd rather be in the three than the four. But how do you manage that with where your stars are and how banged up they are and how much has been put on their bodies over the last 80 games? Because it is damaging. It gets toxic. It gets defeating. You have to power through. You have to push through. At the same time, You don't want to overwork it if you have a situation to get a bit of a breather. If you have a situation where you don't need to to have Joel Embiid on the floor diving around and scoring 30 to 40 points in 35 minutes of play. I don't think that that's necessarily extremely important right now.